So there's a ton of talk out there about ground reaction forces and how important they are to your golf game, especially when it comes to creating distance. But a lot of people constantly talk about ground reaction forces without remembering it's a reaction force. So what happens before the reaction? Well, we need an action force. So what we're going to look at in this video is how we use this body to create an action force that generates a ground reaction force and helps us play some way better golf. So I think most people have heard about the kinetic sequence at this point. We know that we get to the top of our swing and then from here we're going to slide to the left or glide or use horizontal force, however you want to call that. Then we're going to torque and then we're going to stand up. And I think most people would agree with the order of the kinetic sequence, which is what I've just described. But what happens prior to all this good stuff with the ground reaction forces? And that's really, really important because for us to have a reaction, we need to have an action. And where most golfers really struggle is getting that action force to happen in time for all the goodness of the ground reaction forces to happen in the correct timing and sequence that allows us to go ahead and tee off, hit bombs, and stay pain free. So what is an action force and how does it relate to the ground reaction forces? Well, if we know that an action has to happen before a reaction, then an action force is what has to happen prior to us being able to take advantage of the ground forces. And when we think of an action force, I want to change the terminology slightly and call it a down force. And I think that's a really easy way of thinking about this. So here's what I mean by a down force. I think everybody is very aware that when we set up to the golf ball, I think a lot of people would say they move their weight to the right. But in reality, we know that we're really not trying to move the center of mass or the weight around a ton. But we definitely know that the pressure underneath the feet moves to the right. And we know that we're putting more pressure onto our trail side during the backswing than we have on our lead side. That's that pressure shift away from the target that most people are very aware of. So if we understand that there's a pressure shift away from the ball and we understand that I now weigh more on my right side than I did when I started, then it's fair to assume that I am pushing more on that piece of turf than I was when I started. So I've created a downforce into the ground. And when we create this downforce, how I keep the force there and rotate is by keeping the downforce underneath the cuboid of the trail foot and then rotating the spiral line to the trail side. The right spiral line just rotating, rotating, rotating. And we can see that I'm keeping my pressure underneath this trail side. Now, where a lot of golfers really struggle is that when they start taking the club back, they actually have more pressure on their left foot than their right. So the downforce is on the left foot. And that's where things get really complicated because we don't create any kind of runway. So why is this so important? That's what we're gonna continue to look at and talk about how the body twists against the ground instead of against the spine. So we've talked a lot about how an action force is really a down force and how that's really important to create via twisting of the right spiral line of the human anatomy versus just twisting the body open as we swing the golf club around our body. So taking a little bit deeper dive into this, when we think about how we load and create that downforce on the trail side, what we wanna kind of consider here is we load through the cuboid, which is back here, so we're gonna supinate the foot a little bit. And when we supinate that foot and load into that cuboid, that allows my fibula to rotate approximately another 20 degrees. So you can see I'm really trying to twist the ball of my foot, not my heel. I'm not trying to put my heel down, rather trying to twist the ball of my foot into the ground. And I get that cuboid loaded, and now I really feel my fibula can't move laterally away from the target now. So I've done a really good job of twisting and keeping that down force there. Now the really cool thing is once I get all of that there, I can't go anymore and now I'm going to start twisting back towards the target out and away from that cuboid 
towards the head of the first metatarsus or the big toe. And that's gonna be a really good way for me to get my club, especially with my driver, working pretty neutral, if not slightly end to out, because we understand how the pressure shift correlates very well to the club path. So by getting more twist and downforce into this trail foot earlier, now I'm able to twist out of that and create a nice line of action with my pressure shift that allows me to get to my lead side and then rotate and engage the left spiral line as well. So this sounds pretty complex, but essentially what we've got to do is we've got to twist our right foot against the ground. You can see I'm not opening my hip, rather I'm twisting into the ball of my foot. And then once I have that, I want to hold that and rotate. Now the heel does go down slightly and pop back up. I'm not saying we want to keep the right heel up. I'm doing this for demonstration, but we definitely want to think that we're staying more on the balls of our feet throughout our golf swing and not finding our heels. This is really what throws off those ground reaction forces. So we've talked about creating that action force through the trail cuboid, up through the fibula, up through the femur, and now that creates a really nice stable lower body. And now I can create lots of mobility and twist my upper body. And that's where we're gonna see that the pressure does kind of fall a little bit towards the heel but it's only briefly and for a second, and then I'm out of that action line towards the head of the first metatarsis from the trail cuboid and trying to post up into that lead side. So a really cool way we could think about this is we can show this to you using the Swing Catalyst uh, dual 3D force plates. And we got a great example to show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw up Fast Eddie. And Fast Eddie obviously is an incredible mover and rotator and definitely something that I think that we should look at and strive more for in our golf swings as normal human beings. I'm not saying that we're gonna be able to do what Eddie does at his magnitude and speed, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive to move more in his order because I think it makes great sense. And what we see with Eddie is that with that torque, we see that it turns negative, right? Or away from the ball or target Okay, we can see that he gets that going negative, but then we see when he gets to roughly P2, what ends up happening is he actually starts turning it back to positive this direction towards the target. So he's really getting in and out of that by P2. And this is where we need to really see that action force occurring and getting back to zero. So when we think about this, most golfers really struggle when they set up to the golf ball and what they do is they kind of, they think about taking this right hip and moving it back and away, right? We've got to open this up. We've got to make a big turn. And what ends up happening for most golfers is they start opening that hip. And then you can see I'm way back into my right heel. The club has gotten way behind me. And now I'm going to have a really hard time getting my arms not being stuck behind my body as I try to hit this ball. And more importantly, it's really hard to push up out of my heel. So there's a very good chance by over rotating and getting the right glute back and getting the right heel engaged, I'm gonna have a really hard time using that line of action with my right foot. And I'm gonna have a tough time not having the club stuck behind me. So what do we do here? Well, like we said, we don't wanna be trying to find that heel and open that hip. Rather, we wanna be trying to twist the ball of that foot. So by the time I get the club back to P2, you can see how I'm really twisting that right foot and now I can turn it around. And I can make that really dynamic by using the ball of that foot in a twisting action and not simply trying to open the hip, close the hip, open the hip, close the hip. You can see that not only does that move my right glute back, but it moves my left shoulder forward and really makes it difficult for me to get up and out of the way without using some early extension. So we've talked about ground reaction forces and how to set the table for great ground reaction forces via making a solid action force by loading through the trail cuboid, up through the trail leg, and then creating a lot of mobility in the upper body. So by creating this down force or action force with good timing, this really is gonna make it much, much easier for us to go about taking advantage of those ground reaction forces that we're all seeking so that we can hit the ball farther and straighter. So how do we go and take something pretty complex 
like the negative and positive torque of the body during the golf swing relative to the positions and make it actionable for you. Well, we're gonna take a really high tech problem and give it a really low tech solution. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a little alignment stick here. If you don't have one of these, you can actually take a golf club and flip it around and use it this way as well. Now for the purposes of this drill, we do not wanna do this with the golf club traditional with the weight away from the hand. So I wanna emphasize that. Do not do this drill with the club normal as you would normally play. We wanna flip it around and grip it about the shaft. So that's the key for this. But for this exercise, we're gonna use the alignment stick because it sounds a lot cooler and looks a lot cooler and I can make it move faster. So with that being said, we're gonna take this alignment stick and what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about just the arms for a minute. And what do we actually wanna use with the arms? Well, we probably wanna use the biceps. So if I was gonna use my biceps, I would wanna contract them. Muscles contract when they load. They don't stretch when they load. If they stretch when we're loading, that's generally when they go pop and we have to stop playing our activity. So we wanna contract our biceps and really feel like we're doing a good job with this. So now that we've got the arms behaving and the wrist behaving, you can see, by the way, not a lot of wrist in this action, right? I'm trying to create a full contraction in both the lead and trail arm. That's what's key here, okay? So that doesn't look very good for a golf swing. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding a little speed to this. So to show you that from down the line, start slow. And that's starting to look a lot more like a golf swing. So as you could see during the drill, a lot of the times my heels were not touching the ground. And I was actually really focused on staying more up on the balls and feeling like I twist my feet. And we can see that that actually moves me away from the ball. As I twist, that naturally moves me away from the ball, right? So when we think about good twisters and good movers, we think about PGA and LPGA Tour players who stand really, really close to the golf ball at setup, right? So if they're twisting and taking advantage of this torque, then that's how they're able to create space in the golf swing to swing the golf club. So a couple key points to make sure you follow when doing this drill is we wanna feel like the elbows stay inside the frame of the body. And to define the frame of the body, we wanna think about the rib cage. So we can see that my elbows are staying inside the frame of my body. Even when I get the club moving faster, I'm trying to keep the frame, okay, around the elbows. Now, when we want to add depth, that's when we have to start rotating and twisting the frame against the lower body. So I'm not trying to open the hips when I do this. I'm actually trying to stay forward and feel like my hips don't move very much. And then I create the twist or the mobility with the upper body. And that's really the way we wanna go about creating speed in the golf swing. So once again, talking about the kinetic sequence, I don't think there's any new information there, but I think that what we wanna think about is how do we set the table to get those ground reaction forces to happen sooner? Because we all also agree that most people tend to be very late with their ground reaction forces. So thinking about this action force, getting people to load the right spiral line through the trail cuboid, that's gonna be a really great place for a lot of golfers to start. And this is really a great way to get people out of the reverse pivot that we tend to see a lot of out there and get people moving that pressure more onto that trail side and not being afraid to supinate that trail foot because supination is not the worst thing to happen. And if we don't supinate, we're never gonna create any kind of stability within that trail leg. So we hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or need a little clarification on anything that we talked about, please leave comments below. We'll try to get back to those as soon as possible and make sure to subscribe while you're there so you never miss one of our new videos as well. So thanks so much and until next time, keep grinding.